everybody welcome to another video here on the Washington Football Maniacs channel my name is Greg and if you're new here thank you for joining us please consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already done so and when you do please consider hitting that notification bell so you will never miss another video release here on the Washington Football Maniacs YouTube channel let's get into today's video shall we so in my last video, of course, uh, being very frustrated, we were talking about Ron Rivera and is he on the hot seat? And certainly, you know, he's probably, with all intents and purposes, he's fine for the season unless we really continue to see the Washington Commanders struggle. And I think certainly everything will be all hunky-dory in Washington land if the Washington Commanders beat the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday. I mean, beating the Dallas Cowboys always seems to brighten anybody's day if you're a Washington fan, right? And uh, so that could certainly ring true for us if we're able to beat the Washington or beat the uh, Dallas Cowboys. But, you know, other than that, you know, we, we were talking about that. But let's talk about what can this current coaching staff do to make things better as far as play calling obviously I don't think we're going to see any personnel change within the coaching staff right now I just you know maybe a position coach here and there I, I don't know if we'll even see that though you know with beyond the the uh, the idea or uh, beyond the fact that um, we did see a position coach get fired earlier before the season for the most part, um, Ron Rivera has been pretty loyal to his coaches, especially when you talk about uh, the coordinators. I don't see Jack Del Rio getting fired, especially when you look at what the commanders did against the Eagles this past Sunday. The defense actually played pretty well for the most part. And because of that, I think Del Rio kind of I know some fans will disagree with me, but I think he, he kind of redeemed himself a little bit. Now, certainly that could all fall apart in the next game because it seems like that's how the defense has, has been. But, you know, the defense played pretty well. But overall, we we do know that there's there's issues right now on the offensive side of the ball. And we saw, obviously, some... Uh, you know, some adjustments that were made on the defensive side of the ball, whether if it was due to injuries or if it was game planning or whatever, it seemed to work. So what does the commanders need to do on offense in order to at least, you know, put band-aids on the situation where we're really hurting, which of course is the offensive line right now. That offensive line is just reeling. Uh, we have injuries up front. The offensive line just hasn't played very well and hasn't really protected the quarterback. I'm going to talk about the quarterback. All right, you know, it seems like that a lot of the fans feel like that Carson Wentz holds the football a little too long. Even Ron Rivera had admitted that he felt like there were a lot of uh, issues with the offensive line, but there were also issues with Carson Wentz holding the football too long. I can probably get on board with that as well. But what can we do to alleviate both? Well, I think the first thing that I would do if I'm Scott Turner, I would look at my offensive play calling. And I would say, you know what? We haven't ran the ball very well. We haven't protected the quarterback very well. So I think what we need to do is we need to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands much faster. How do we do this? Let's mix in some shorter passes, some timing passes, some slant passes. Um, let's do some screen passes, some bubble passes. Uh, let's do let's do a lot of that. Sometimes the shorter passes are an extension of the running game. You know, when your running game is not um, hitting on all cylinders, that's what you need to do sometimes to run the or to move the ball methodically up the field. And that was one of the keys to the game that I talked about in a you know a couple of uh, videos back in the Eagles game was the key to to beating Philly is to keep their offense off the field. We couldn't do that because we kept having three and outs. 
and you're going to go beat anybody just having three and outs all the time, getting sacked, and and then you know your your drive is over. So a lot of a lot of what I'm talking about is, is probably being regurgitated from earlier videos, but it still rings true. I think you got to change your offensive philosophy. You got to hold on to the football. Yes, you got to have ball control football. You got to be able to run the football. But if you're having trouble with that, you got to be able to throw in some shorter passes. You can't have Carson Wentz doing seven seven step dropbacks every single time that he drops back to pass and for him to hold on to the football until he finds a receiver who is open. Uh, that's what's happening and he's getting sacked a lot of times and getting pressured because of that. So what you have to do is you got to get the football out of Carson Wentz's hands early and if you can do that uh, get him uh, the ball to his, his tight ends. You know, you need to get Logan Thomas involved, John Bates, you know, guys like that. Um, he, you know, during the uh, preseason, it seems like that's what he was doing a lot of. And then it seems like even in that first game against the Jaguars, he was spreading the football out around, right? He wasn't really throwing the football a whole lot to his receivers. It seems like he was really targeting his tight ends. And that's what the Washington Commanders need to get back to doing Targeting those tight ends, throwing those shorter intermediate passes, moving the football up and down the field a little bit more methodically, that will open up the running game a little bit more as well. And, you know, we are going to get you know Brian Robinson back, not this game, but probably the game after that. And so hopefully our running game will open up a little bit more after that. But, you know, we still got to consider the fact that our offensive line is beat up and just quite frankly not playing that good. So that's why, you know, having the shorter intermediate type of passing game is going to help. Now it's going to probably force the defense to try to step up to stop those shorter passes. And that's when you can, you know, then you can audible out of that and you know, maybe set some of those uh, receivers for a little bit more of the uh, the up and go patterns and, and um, try to beat them over the top. But um, that's what I think Washington needs to do is to get Carson Wentz in a good, you know, rhythm earlier on. Don't try, because right now this is what you're doing. You're putting him in a position where he's having to get huge chunks of yards and it's not working. Um and yes, I do realize being able to go to the run game earlier on helps. And if that's getting stuffed, then that's already, you know, of course, that's eat, that's really beating that game plan. But I think the shorter passes is what opens things up. When, when you get the defenders who's going to start doubling up on those receivers, that's when you can kind of, you know, call some draw plays to the running backs some option plays maybe to get them some yardage up the middle. So then they have to back off from those um, receivers. They're, they have to start guarding that middle. And it's going to start opening things up a little bit further down the field, uh, taking some of that pressure off of the quarterback. I think that's what you're going to really need to, to see some adjustments like that on offense. That's going to also take some pressure off of that that offensive line, I believe, as well. That offensive line needs to get into a rhythm. And just like the quarterback needs to get into a rhythm. And just like the entire offense needs to get into a rhythm. And that all starts with Scott Turner. He's got to be willing to be able to make those adjustments. And sometimes you've got to be able to make those adjustments right away, on the fly, in the middle of a game. You can't wait till halftime and say, we've got to make some adjustments at that point. You know, you just, at that point, you're down by three scores, and you're really, you know, you've dug yourself into a deep hole. And that's what's happened to us in the last couple of games. And so I think we really need to see Scott Turner change his philosophy around because, you know, obviously it's not working. It will definitely work if you've got a stout offensive line. You've got some pro bowlers that are bookends on that offensive line there, but we don't have that right now. We've got a very average offensive line. We've got some players who are, are injured. So uh, we really need to change up the game plan. It's going to take some pressure off of that offensive line as well as Carson uh, Wentz. Uh, 
So, you know, the defense, we saw some adjustments. You know, we put uh, Benjamin St. Juice out on the um, the end there, and I thought he played very well. Um, you know, he, he defended very well. He had a lot of knockdown passes. Uh, just really enjoyed how he played. I think that he, we need to keep uh, Benjamin St. Juice out there. Um, you know, I, I think that that's a better position for him. Maybe we move uh, William Jackson in into the slot because, you know, William Jackson hasn't played that well this year. And, you know, I said this on Twitter on Sunday. I was like, you know, isn't it amazing that William Jackson isn't playing and the secondary is playing a lot better? I mean, wasn't that amazing, right? Against some receivers that, quite frankly, is probably the best trio of receivers in the league right now. And, you know, and I'm saying that we have Curtis Samuel and Scary Terry and uh, Jahan Dotson. So, you know, um, there were adjustments that were made. Of course, you know, having Cameron Curl back really helped as well. He did get a little banged up in that, that uh, game. So hopefully Cameron Curl is going to be okay against the Cowboys. We're going to need all the help we can possibly get. Um, but, you know, overall, the, the defense, I think, made some adjustments they needed to make. Certainly that defensive line, you know, they stuffed the run quite a bit now they did let some runs through but for the most part the Eagles had a hard time running the football against that defensive front and this was something we did not see the week before we saw a defensive front that just allowed anything and everything um, totally different in this game they just matched up much better against the Eagles in that respect so we're you know we're hoping that this is going to be a continuation into the Dallas game next week um, but it really I think that you know these are adjustments that uh, the Washington Commanders are going to need to make if they're going to really be able to change and you just turn things around for the season because right now I mean this is another division game and if Washington drops this game, they're already 0-2 in the division. And then you're looking at a team that's 1-3 overall. And this is not good news for the first quarter of, of your season. Um, you know, pretty soon the, the, uh, the saying of, you know, we're just three or four games into the season, this is a 17-game season, starts to really not hold a lot of water after a while. If you don't really get off to a good start, especially with two of those games being division games, you're sunk. And right now, I think if Washington doesn't beat Dallas next week, they're in trouble. And so that is what I'm thinking. These are the adjustments that Washington needs to make. If you agree, you know, let me know. If you disagree, let me know as well. Let's talk about in the comments section. What do you think that Washington needs to do as far as adjustments? Now, you know, a lot of you guys are going to say, well, we need to get rid of uh, Jack Del Rio and Scott Turner and Ron Rivera. Well, we know that that's not going to happen. So knowing that that's not going to happen, realistically, what adjustments do we need to make? Uh, are there adjustments you think we need to make along the offensive line? Uh, which players do you think would be the best players to put in that offensive line? Who knows? We haven't really talked about a lot of that. You know, I, I think um, uh, certainly the offensive line is suspect, so maybe there needs to be a change. You know, with some personnel at the offensive line. Uh, right now, we're having to make some changes because of injury. Uh, but what would you do? Let me know in the comments section below. Again. Thank you for joining us. Please consider subscribing to this channel. I can use all the help I can get on this channel. When you do subscribe, uh, make sure that you hit that notification bell so you won't miss any other video releases from the Washington Football Maniacs channel. And as well as, if you can, like this video, um, share this video, and also, you know, like I said, comment on this video. Um, I have a Patreon page. Feel free to visit the Patreon page and you can support me there. And as always, um, hell to the Washington Commanders. Let's go Maniacs. We'll see you tomorrow.